There's nothing like pulling off the most epic prank on April Fool's Day because, quite frankly, everyone expects it already. Even ad agencies join in on the fun to fool the most gullible customers. Whopper toothpaste, anyone? Whopper toothpaste. Keep your mouth Whopper fresh 24-7. But it's all fun and games until someone gets seriously hurt. Or worse, the government unwittingly gets involved. Today, we're counting down the 12 April Fool's pranks that went too far. What's up, Fagnatics? This is Discovery Amuse serving up your daily dose of the most outrageous outlandish and out of this world fun facts. Our top pick is one of the most elaborate gags of all time, and it actually took three years to execute. How did it end? Stay tuned for that. Now, send in the clowns. Peekaboo! <laughs> Number 12, school shooting prank. There are a lot of things that cross the line between funny and just downright inappropriate. Like wearing blackface, making bomb jokes at the airport, or faking a darn school shooting. Angela Timmons is an employee at the Virginia College in South Carolina who thought it would be funny to pull a horrible joke on her daughter who was in New York at that time. In 2014, Angela texted her daughter to say that she could hear gunfire from inside her office and that she was hiding for dear life. When the daughter didn't receive any further replies from her mother, she called the police to report the school shooting incident. Angela's twisted prank backfired when authorities raced to the school, only to discover that it was nothing but a joke that blew out of proportion. The punchline? Angela was arrested on several charges, including aggravated breach of peace and disturbing a school. Keep watching because our number one entry is a cautionary tale for pranksters who just don't know when to stop. Number 11, element of surprise. This DJ duo, who must have been chemistry nerds back in the day, proved to be too witty for their own good. I simply respect chemistry. On April Fool's 2013, Florida morning radio show hosts Val St. John and Scott Fish thought it was a funny idea to warn their listeners that a chemical called dihydrogen monoxide was reportedly coming out of taps in the Fort Myers area, and the consumption of this may lead to symptoms like sweating, urination, and prune-like skin. Obviously, their listeners panicked so much that it led Lee County officials to issue a statement that their water supply is safe to use. The radio tandem was pulled off the air in the middle of their show and served indefinite suspension. Lucky for them, the Florida Health Department didn't pursue any felony charges. If by now you haven't figured out the gag, well, you might want to consider going back to middle school because dihydrogen monoxide is simply the chemical formula for water. Can I get you anything? Water would be nice. Number 10, how to get away with murder jokes. I bet even Annalise Keating wouldn't be able to defend this lady who's guilty of having the worst sense of humor. Are you out of your mind? On April 1st, 2013, Tennessee resident Susan Tammy Hudson had this brilliant idea for a practical joke for her sister, Helen. Susan told her that she just killed her husband and asked Helen to help her hide the body. I said, Helen, I shot my husband. I'm cleaning up the mess. Let's go bury him in Blackwater. But word got around really fast and the police turned up at her house in no time. And next thing I knew, there was law everywhere. The response was excellent. But the joke was on Susan because instead of bursting into laughter, the police handcuffed her. You're under arrest. No, I'm not. She was eventually released after her husband arrived home very much alive. <gasps> Number nine, Goosebins War. April Fool's Day's tricks are supposed to bring laughter, not spark an actual war. This means war. Hey, hey, it's cool. Unfortunately, one Israeli intelligence officer didn't get the memo back in 1986 when he planted a hoax that aired over Israel's state-run radio station at that time. 
The report said Lebanese Muslim leader Nabi Berry had been seriously injured or possibly killed in an assassination attempt. This announcement also aired on Lebanese radio stations and flared up tensions between the two countries. Thankfully, the war was avoided after the report was confirmed to be false, forcing a quick retraction and apologies from both sides. Apologize. Are you totally deranged? See, people? Fake news can be very dangerous. You are fake news. Number eight. A Titanic Mistake king of the world! Some radio hosts must think they're the comedy king of the world, but this one almost put his listeners in grave danger. In 2001, radio host Tony Aldridge of Southern FM in Brighton announced that on April 1, a full-size replica of the Titanic would be visible from the cliffs of Beachy Head as it sailed along the Sussex coast on its way to France. The idea came after the DJ saw a rerun of the Titanic film on TV. Hundreds of people fell victim to the hoax and braved the windy, treacherous cliff just to catch a glimpse of the Titanic knockoff. Spectators brought binoculars and some even drove from as far as 40 miles away. According to one report, some onlookers actually thought they were going to see the original Titanic. Obviously, they flunked their history class. Anywho, the heavy weight from the crowd caused cracks on the cliff with a part of it eventually collapsing a few days later. Thankfully, people had gone by the time it crumbled, so no one was hurt, and the radio station later apologized for their deception. Number 7. Fake Expectations Seriously, who still falls for the pregnant joke on April Fools? Ladies, it's time to retire this insensitive prank once and for all, especially if you don't want to end up like this woman who went from bun in the oven to pain in the neck real quick. In 2013, Arizona teenager Tony Wheeler pranked her boyfriend, Derek Bauer, that she was pregnant. But when Wheeler revealed the gag, Bauer got angry at his girlfriend. Understandable. However, Wheeler lost her temper too and pulled out a knife to threaten Bauer. The crazy girlfriend cut him across the throat and bit him twice. Boy, that escalated quickly. I mean, that really got out of hand fast. Bauer was rushed to the hospital and had to get seven stitches on the neck while Wheeler was wheeled into the Wagoner County Jail. <laughs> she was charged with assault. Number six, Jailhouse Game Show. If there's anything we can learn from this next story, it's that you must think before you tweet, especially if you're in law enforcement. In 2015, the Manchester police received some serious backlash for a prank gone wrong. At midnight on April Fool's Day, the Twitter account of the Greater Manchester Police in Radcliffe posted this. What is this, a Black Mirror twist on Big Brother or something? Obviously, the tweet drew flack from locals, especially from the parents of some of the inmates, so the authorities had to issue this apology tweet later that day. Number 5. Doomsday Prankster we almost called this story How Not to Promote a Planetarium Show, but obviously too long and anticlimactic. On March 31st, 1940, a day before April Fools, the Franklin Institute wanted to announce its new planetarium show featuring cosmic apocalypse in the most creative way possible. And what better way to generate some buzz but to announce the end of the world? So the Institute's spokesman, William Castellini, gave a press release to Philly radio station KYW, which states that your worst fears that the world will end see are confirmed by astronomers at Franklin Institute, Philadelphia. Scientists predict that the world will end at 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time tomorrow. Too bad. Instead of calling the planetarium, terrified residents phoned newspapers, police stations, and local government. KYW later issued an apology and Castellini was sacked for the PR nightmare. I wonder if they had crisis managers back in the day. What is your experience in crisis management? Good question. Number four. What a hoot. Al surely hath no fury like a waitress scorned. But what about the baby? I got it under control. But it's gonna burn. 
Meet Jody Berry, a waitress at Hooters in Florida, who became the victim of a nasty corporate prank by her employer. In 2001, the manager announced a contest for the month of April. Whoever sells the most beer for that month would win a Toyota. Being the competitive server that she is, Barry gave it her all to win the coveted prize. However, when it was time to claim her Toyota, she was blindfolded and brought to the parking lot where this was waiting for her. A Toyota. Get it? Hashtag savage. Imagine putting in all those extra hours for a dumb action figure. Barry got so pissed that she quit her job and sued the owners of Hooters Gulf Coast Wings. She won the settlement for an undisclosed amount and was eventually asked to pick out whatever type of Toyota she wanted. Now that's a real life revenge of the Sith. Wait a minute, how did this happen? We're smarter than this. Number three, alien invasion. Journalists are looked up to as the beacons of truth, but that doesn't mean they can't have fun once in a while. Al God, a Jordanian newspaper, ran a front page article on April 1, 2010, saying that flying saucers piloted by 10 foot tall creatures landed near the town of Jaffer, about 180 miles from the capital. It even went as far as to say that the UFOs interrupted communication lines in the area and caused panic among residents. Because of the fake headline, parents refused to send their kids to school that day, and even Jaffer's mayor admitted to almost evacuating the town's 13,000 residents. He also had security authorities comb the city for extraterrestrials. After things died down and the city was still alien-free, Al God apologized and said they only meant to entertain, not scare people. Good luck earning back your credibility, though. Yikes. <laughs> well, good luck with all that. Number two, the bearer of fake news. While we're on the subject of broadcasters gone bad, here's another one from way back in 1980. On that fateful April Fool's Day, Massachusetts WNAC-TV ended its 6 p.m. news with a bulletin that warned people that the Great Blue Hill was about to erupt. They even rolled some old footage of Mount St. Helens volcano in Washington and aired an edited remark from President Jimmy Carter to make it more convincing. As soon as the news broke, some Milton residents began to flee their homes. The Milton Police Department also received frantic calls from people asking if they need to evacuate their houses. However, at the end of the broadcast, the reporter held up a card that read, April Fools. Hello? That's not funny! The TV station was forced to issue an apology in its 11 p.m. newscast, and the next day, the executive producer that ran the prank was fired for, quote-unquote, failure to exercise good news judgment. The Prime Minister of Sweden visited Washington today, and my tiny little nipples went to France. Before we go to our number one pick, do us a solid and make sure to smash the subscribe button and hit the notification bell. Don't forget to choose all so you won't miss out on any of our latest life-changing boredom-busting content. And of course, be sure to turn on notifications in your app settings. Number 10, April Fool's number one, the most magnificent prank ever. On April 1st, 1974, residents of Sitka, Alaska woke up to the sight of black smoke emanating from the crater of Mount Edgecombe. As locals feared an impending eruption, oh my God. the Coast Guard immediately flew over the volcano to investigate. As the chopper approached the source of the black smoke, the plume grew bigger, and as soon as they were over the crater, they looked down and saw a stack of old tires burning in the cone of the volcano. Beside the flaming rubber was a spray-painted 50-foot-high black lettering that spelled April Fool! But instead of getting crucified, Oliver Porky Bicker, the evil genius behind the epic joke, was actually applauded for his elaborate prank. Porky revealed that the idea came to him in 1971. That's when he started collecting 70 tires and kept them in an airplane hangar. 
Three years later, when the visibility conditions were perfect for the prank, Porky decided to pull the stunt with the help of some pilot friends. He later disclosed that the Federal Aviation Administration and the local police were in on the joke as they had to seek clearance. The Coast Guard, however, was left out, but ultimately everyone had a blast from the volcano prank. <laughs> well played, Porky! Well played! So, what's your own April Fool's Day story? Share them with us in the comments section below. Take home any of our exclusive gear by browsing our merch shop or clicking the link in the video description. And while you're at it, take our quiz to find out how you can earn extra cash online doing what you do best. Awesome, right? And as they say, what goes around comes around. So before you pull off any pranks, I highly suggest you first check out our list of the 10 satisfying times karma came for awful people. Till then, be a good sport, Fact and see you in the next video.